Hey guys, Vaina here from Vaina.com and for today's video, we're going to talk about the things that are making your home look dated. Well, part of my philosophy is that I always want to help my viewers figure out the quickest way to make the biggest impact. And you'll do that when you address the things that are actually making your home look dated. This video is my opinion. I'm an interior designer in the field for many years. If you guys disagree with any of my tips or have additional ones that I haven't covered here today, please definitely feel free to leave those in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Wood paneling in your home will bring you right back to the 60s or the 70s and not always in a good way. The reason it looks dated is because you've got too much of the same material and it can make it feel dark and oppressive and not up to date. What is in right now are painted paneled walls. So one of the easiest and simplest solutions would be to paint the wood paneling if you don't want to remove it. You could paint it white. That's always a really fresh look and actually having those vertical lines will actually bring the eye up and create a very interesting texture. You could even paint it like a dark, dark blue or a charcoal or a black and then use it with an opposite color to brighten it up. If you want to keep the wood paneling, I actually have a solution for you as well. You can decorate with all white. White drapery, white bedding, a white sofa, and tons of plants. Creating that contrast against the wood paneling and then adding a ton of plants will actually look very, very cool, modern, and fresh. Changing out those light fixtures will instantly update your space. And even if you're just replacing it with something very clean and simple, clean and simple is actually a very good thing in design, or creating more of a statement light fixture over your dining table, that will instantly change the whole vibe of the space. Milo. If you're having a hard time deciding what style of light to choose, you can actually take my style quiz if you haven't done so already. Style quiz also connects to all these amazing Pinterest boards that I created and then you can see what kind of style of light fixture goes with that style and that'll give you kind of like a general starting point. There's tons of amazing light fixtures that are out there at every single price point. I actually lived in a place one time I had to rent it that had vertical blinds and the very first thing that I did was take them down. They were vertical blinds on a slider. If you are a renter, I still encourage you to do this. There's just absolutely no way to make those look chic and usually vertical blinds are the type of window treatment that is used in a more contemporary space or modern space. I think it looks a little bit better in the style of architecture to do a more tailored window treatment. So what I mean is that you want those window treatments, those curtains and those shears to just hit the ground. You don't really want to do that very romantic silk drapes that are billowing because I actually don't think that type of window treatment really goes with that modern style of house. So you want to keep it more clean so that you're just getting rid of those vertical blinds, adding some drapes and the shears for privacy. You also want to make sure that you hang your uh, drapery rod at least 12 inches on the outside of the door frame since you will want to be passing through that sliding door and you want to be able to stack your drapes to the side so they don't get caught in the door. But anything to get rid of those vertical blinds will bring your home up to date immediately. The layout or the floor plan of your space is probably the most important design task that you should accomplish before you even start considering buying furniture. What designers do is we sketch out room layouts and well, you can do the same thing. You can loosely sketch out the, the shape of your room and then play around with different options on where you place that sofa. I'm using the living room because that's the most common room that I see poorly laid out. The bedroom is a little bit more intuitive because there's usually only one or two places that that bed can go. First try to identify the two places that you can locate your sofa then try to place those chairs in ways where they're, they're opposite of the sofa or perpendicular to the sofa. It's hard to make your furniture look as good on carpeting as it does on hardwood floors. So obviously if you own your home and you want to eventually switch out your carpeting and do hardwood floors, I think that's a really great way to spend your money. Um, and I think choosing the same floor to run throughout at least that 
whole first floor, except for maybe the kitchen, makes a lot of sense. And you could definitely do the same flooring in the kitchen as well. I'm really mixed on layering rugs over carpet. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I think it can work. I would just focus on layering a rug on the main seating arrangement in the living room. If you have a room that you need carpeting in, you can do sizal wall-to-wall -wall carpet, and it is so elegant. It's perfect for so many styles, new, traditional, modern, anything. It is a very, I think, underutilized option for wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. You just want to make sure that you get something that's soft enough to walk on, and you can do that by ordering samples. There are companies that you can buy wall-to-wall -wall carpeting in sizal that is absolutely so chic, and then when you install that wall-to-wall, -wall, you can layer Kaleem rugs on it, you can look oriental rugs, Persian rugs, things like that, and it is absolutely so, so chic. brass doorknobs that kind of come basic. All these basics, these contractor grade basics can make the home look dated and they're so easy to switch out. So I always actually recommend bronze hardware now, like bronze doorknobs and hinges. So easy. And even a place like Home Depot has definitely things that I have purchased for clients. You know, just very simple, clean lines, but that dark bronze color I think looks very modern. I tend to right now use bronze for all of my drapery rods, French return, not anything too fat. Brass is still in for kitchen hardware. You can definitely still do that. Um, but just choosing updated fixtures for your hardware and your doorknobs, it makes a heck of a lot of difference in bringing it up to date. Sometimes we paint a room, it doesn't work, and then you end up just leaving it. Any bold, aggressive colors that aren't really working in your space are something that people will notice as soon as they come into your home. I, I often give the advice of you should paint last, but if you have just the wrong color in your room, that is a good place to start if it's the obvious thing that is making your home feel like it is from another time zone. I always advise not to buy those matching furniture sets where you can get the sofa, the love seat, and the accent chair, and the coffee, and the side tables, and the two lamps. It never looks good. It always looks generic. It doesn't have any personality. There's no diversity in texture. It has a very generic showroom kind of feel, but not a good kind of showroom, sort of an outdated kind of showroom. So I would avoid matching your furniture. If you have a hard time putting together furniture of different styles, just keep watching my videos and I'll try to do an updated video on how to do that. When you don't have a clear direction or cohesion in your space, start with taking away the things that you're not totally excited about. Just try removing them from the space and then just focusing on the pieces that you really love. Then also go ahead and take that style quiz see what style result you get, and then see how many pieces you already have that matches the style that you got from the quiz, because that will be your base style. And I usually like to do maybe the 20 rule, where you have 80% of the furniture in the style that you're kind of into, and then you have 20 that are different. You just want to make sure that instead of having a hodgepodge of all these different things that don't really go together, you want to unify them either by color, by style, and then have a couple of pieces that are off that'll make it look cool and interesting. If you're watching this and you just think they're so comfortable and great, then that's awesome. You should definitely do what you feel, but there's a lot of different options that you can get depending on what your style is that will still give you that comfort and have that kind of command center, which I think, I feel like that's mostly the man chair in the room, and every man deserves to have a great chair. You can do that in any style, even the cool leather ones, just not that chunky, oversized, marshmallowy size recliner that just really tends to date the room, bring it back to a time we don't wanna be in anymore. So I hope those tips were helpful. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments below. If you guys aren't already subscribed, please definitely hit subscribe, and if you haven't done so already, please take the style quiz and check out the Pinterest boards that I have created to go with each style and let me know in the comments below what style are you. Thank you guys so much and I will see you again next time. Bye.